Stugatz here. Golf is awesome, and the free 18 Birdies app makes it even awesomer. I love this. So cool. I love golf. 18 Birdies is the most complete golf app out there. It tracks all your stats and is packed with tools to improve your game, like a powerful GPS so you'll always know exact distances to the green. But 18 Birdies also rewards you just for playing golf, no matter how good or bad you are. That's because every time you score your round on the app, you can enter the 18 Birdies Dream Games Challenge, where they are giving away thousands of dollars in instant prizes like balls clubs and green fees and those aren't even the big prizes every month they are also giving away once in a lifetime golf experiences things that people like you and me would never get to do like winning one of 12 spots at the arnold palmer invitational pro-am at the world-renowned bay hill course in orlando florida imagine playing one of the best courses in the world alongside top pga pros now a little lawyer speak no purchase necessary void where prohibited restrictions apply see official rules at 18 birdies.com backslash dream games download 18 birdies today and make your phone the best club in your bag this is the dan levator show with the stugatz podcast today on the uncle fatty show david hasselhoff returns wayne newton will be on with us that's today with uncle fatty yeah also we're gonna ask tony dungy <laughs> we're gonna ask <laughs> tony dungy uh whether he's in the mile high club or not. There have been some questions about whether he even knows what the Mile High Club is. So we're going to. Oh, the only question that remains, he's joining us at 10 30 Eastern, is whether we're asking him this at the beginning of the interview or we're going to wait to soften him up a little bit and then ask him at the end because it'll destroy the interview if we ask him at the top. Right. Got to ask him at the end. Um, I have updates on Pulse. Early voting, by the way, on Tony Dungy and the Mile High Club at Levitard Show on Twitter. Do you believe Tony Dungy is in the Mile High Club? 78% of the audience says no. I can't believe 22% of the audience is saying yes. Mike's uncomfortable with his entire subject matter. His body language is uh, squeamish. He is more competent than he's ever been. He used to be scared and competent producer. Now he is scared more competent <laughs> producer but he spends way too much time scared yes he does uh 51 percent of the audience uh does think that tony dungy does indeed know what the mile high club is i don't know what you guys are doing with religious people though you're making them stiffs and prudes and repressed and some can be that but i'm maintaining that there are plenty of religious people who have a paul giamatti in billion secret lifestyle with their wife that's erotic that is covered under the insurance policies in the Bible because of the oath that they made under God and now get your freak on. <laughs> you like Billions a lot, huh? I love Billions. I am, uh, I'm about three episodes into the second season, and, and I just love the show. It's fantastic. I have a standing policy of waiting for any show to find its voice. I will not give up on any show that I've invested in after one episode. Except vinyl. After one episode, you were done. Yeah. And so was HBO. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yes. And. But you'll give a show a time to breathe, some time to breathe. Well, here's right? the thing about billions. I'm not fascinated by money the way that other people are fascinated by money. And so the, pre the starting point on billions, you're going to get a lot of people just because you got a show named billions. Because people are fascinated by money and power. We've been having this conversation around here for a long time. You guys think that the owner of the Miami Heat, Mickey Arison, is some sort of strange person who's not normal. So you ask him questions like, when's the last time you went to Burger King? And he's like, yeah, earlier this week. There, you know, I w went through the drive through Like, But you guys don't think of, of billionaires as normal people just because they have money. So I'm not as fascinated by the starting point on the show. And furthermore, I'm only six episodes in, and I've enjoyed the six episodes, but they've also been really heavy-handed. And I trust that the people who write the show and produce the show will get better as the characters evolve. Very few shows. Breaking Bad got you from the very beginning. Very few shows do that. Hell, The Wire didn't do that for me. No, same here. Um, but Billions, you know, even for me, I realized the first season really was very heavy-handed. Um, they fixed something there. Like, writers had a discussion, Giamatti, actors had a discussion with writers. They got feedback from somewhere because it's not nearly as heavy-handed going into the second you season. You have to allow creative projects. That's why movies can be so hard. 
you have to allow creative projects to develop a voice over time, weeks, after you get to invest in the characters, get to know you got to allow the authors, the writers to to develop the characters, make you feel something for the characters. The actors have to you have to suspend disbelief. That's not an easy challenge to overcome but i keep hearing from people that billions is the best show on television and i haven't seen it through six episodes but i i do see the promise of it and paul giamatti's great the other billionaire it he's not so from what i've seen so far that's a dude from homeland yes brody or i shouldn't say the other billionaire he's he's the billionaire he's, he is the billionaire correct but anyways in that show paul giamatti has a secret sex life and it's tawdry it's dirty. And he's happily married. And he's a power broker. And she's a power broker. And I don't know what you guys are doing with religious people where you assume that it's just miss- missionary position and like that. And, you know, the, the same kind of thrust that are now not allowed during NFL celebrations, seven or eight of them, and then you're done. And that's it for the week. It's not religious people. It's just Tony Dungy. But you're doing that to him because he's a very religious. No, person. I'm not. I just there's. I'm, I'm really. I just cannot see Tony Dungy. But you Tony know, Dungy's a former athlete. Like a little elbow to the wife, saying, "Hey, let's go to the back of the plane." Wait a minute. You but know? Tony Dungy was a young man at some point. He was a young man who was in the NFL and was a good football player. Yeah. How do you know what his past looks like? Regardless, we're going to ask him about this, and Mike Ryan is going to continue to be scared and uncomfortable. The only reason I'm cool with this and I'm not even that cool with it, is we can't abandon the threat now. We've been doing it all week. We can't just get scared when Tony Dungy comes around. Do we really need to ask Wayne Newton? Yes. Oh, we know the answer, though. Well, you got to ask, because if the answer is no, it's pretty shocking. Wait a minute. You feel like you knew the answer yesterday with Brian Cranston? He surprised us. You feel like you know the answer with Tony Dungy? He may surprise us. Right. Well, I'm telling you, there are certain locks here. Like, I knew when we asked David Hasselhoff, that was a lock. And I'm telling you, Wayne Newton is a lock. Okay. Well, we will ask Wayne Newton at 1230 Eastern. We will ask Tony Dungy at 1030 Eastern. I have not thought about Tony Dungy since the last time we talked about him. <laughs> now, we do we tend to do ridiculous things with Tony Dungy because Tony Dungy is nice guy ambassador to the NFL. If you got a Michael Vick problem, you just send him to jail. He will go with his ambassador card and everybody and all his feel good and all his uh you know, he's brother Teresa. He gets there and uh, and what washes over you is the washing away of your sins. But the way we've discussed him is we've had him on and asked him what a shopping cart with a mannequin arm would have had statistically as a season with Peyton Manning as the quarterback. (laughs) We'll get that answer for you in a moment. Mike Ryan is busy looking it up because I really didn't know that we were going to start today with Tony Dungy and the Mile High Club. (laughs) And the other thing that I think of when we're playing word association with Tony Dungy, first let's play Tony Dungy's answer to what statistically a tight end uh, that was a shopping cart with a mannequin arm would have done in the Peyton Manning offense. That shopping cart with a mannequin arm would have how many yards and how many touchdowns that season? If you play a tight end, uh, and it's, it's movable, we can push the cart a little bit so it can get downfield. <laughs> your left, yeah, you your left, Saturday your, your, your left tackle has to, has to push it. Just, just okay, push it. And- I, I would say he'd, he'd probably get uh, 40 catches and five touchdowns. <laughs> we deduced it would also have a fumbling problem, right. but the left tackle's got to throw. It's got to push it out into its route. <laughs> the other thing that I think of when I think of Tony Dungy is before we went national and before we went to ESPN. Many, 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 many incarnations. Oh, and no. Before Years we signed ago. contracts here, oh, the, when no. we were doing just a local show, before we Stugatz got in bed in college, with ESPN, basically. yeah, basically college. Oh no, Stugatz now furiously going to try and delete that account. All of it. Uh, Stugatz created a Twitter account oh, that no. was dirty Tony Dungy. Yeah, well, it was the fake Tony Dungy. Way to go, Stugatz. Now you just brought people closer to us. Way to make the investigators. I I mean, he's unbelievable, right, Guillermo? I mean, like, look at him. He's cringing and he's wincing, far. and then he confesses. Like, he, I mean, he is an idiot genius. Like, I was talking, I was finessing it, and Stugatz just gave you the account. All right, go ahead, ESPN. Suspend him retroactively. 
Uncle Fatty. Texture writes in, spectacular interview with lame Kiffin, you flabby jerk. Did you forget to ask him why nobody can stand to be around him for more than a couple of weeks, you chunky baby boy? Is that <laughs> oh, you got me, Texture. You called me a flabby jerk. And then you came over the top and you ran up the score with Chunky Baby Boy. Stugats. What is this voice and face thing? No, I'm, I'm just, I'm defeated. Because <laughs> I, I had retorts and I could use the vocabulary to lash back, but instead I'm just defeated. You look like a Chunky Baby Boy. Yes. This is the Uncle Fatty Show with Stugats on ESPN Radio. Catch me and Mike Golick Jr. every Sunday for weekend observations from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. The Dan Levitard Show is brought to you by the free 18 Birdies app. Make your phone the best club in your bag. Tony Dungy is going to join us in 15 minutes. Uh, we will talk to him about football-related things and the Mile High Club. Many of you are searching through Twitter right now trying to locate the Stugatz account. Um, there are some, uh, we're desperately trying to find email codes from seven years ago to delete this account. Stugatz is not great at subtlety. He's a little bit allergic to it. So, uh, this Tony Dungy account, of course, is following Mike Ryan and the Dan Levitard show and, uh, Ashton Kutcher for some reason. Mm. And that's all that account is following. And we can't figure out how to delete this account. It has not been touched in seven years. <laughs> it was much like Stugatz about all things. He was very excited at the beginning, sent out 10 tweets, made a bunch of Jim Sorgi jokes and Bill Polian jokes, and then it was gone. Yeah. It, it hasn't been touched in seven years. And, of course, we asked Stugatz, who's a hoarder of email, Stugatz, what are the emails? What are the codes? We need to delete this account. Yeah, you can't do it. No. I've quadrupled my followers, though, uh, since we brought it up. And Please stop. Okay. So uh, we've got some epic sound of the day for you. We're going to ask Tony Dungy about this as well. This is uh, Brock Osweiler. I wish we did more of this as reporters um, where we pressed on when when athlete X just falls into cliched talk. We press a little bit, even though it's uncomfortable. Let's go ahead and do the epic sound of the day. Time now for Guillermo's epic sound of the day. It is going to be epic. Hey, guys. Hello, Guillermo. Hey, Bill. You guys familiar with Brock Osweiler? Oh, I forgot. I always forget with the epic Dude, sound man. of the day that I'm not supposed to set it up. I always forget. You know. Yes, I'm familiar with Brock Osweiler. He's the least favorite quarterback for me in the history of the sport. You, you know the sound today? I haven't heard the sound. You seem to be familiar with it. Well, Stugatz, I'll just talk to you then. Okay. Stugatz, Brock Osweiler... He's a Super Bowl champion quarterback. He used to be on the Denver Broncos. Last year, a little bit of a rough patch. Hold on a second, if I may. Can you put up on the poll, is Brock Osweiler a Super Bowl champion quarterback? Oh, he absolutely is. Oh, it's a fact. Well, hey, don't argue with me. Put it on the poll, because I don't think of him as a Super Bowl champion no, quarterback, because he, he didn't play the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. but he made, he made serious contributions to that no, team. I understood, but just yes or no. Is Brock Osweiler a Super Bowl champion quarterback? The question is a yes or no question. Put it up on the poll. Okay, so Super Bowl champion quarterback Brock Osweiler then went to the Houston Texans, had a bit of a rough season, and now he's on the Cleveland Browns. Mm -hmm. And he had this exchange with a reporter yesterday. Are you good enough to be a starting quarterback in this league? I mean, Absolutely. System. Absolutely. Why? <laughs> I, I think the proof is in the film for the past two years. But, I, but some people would say the proof's not in the film from last year. It's okay. <laughs> that's okay there it is he stuck on his chest he was big and bold and then he just retreated that's okay some people would say the proof is in not in the film that's okay i love the lack of belief in himself just go look at that film man <laughs> no he sounded like he was trying to believe in himself right right uh, the sound of the day is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Upgrade the shaving with a fresh blade, whatever you want, for a fraction of the price. Join DollarShaveClub.com today. You'd like some more self-awareness from Brock Osweiler. Oh, but what's he supposed to say, though? I'm Not that the proof is in the film. No, but I'm no, working no, hard. I'm getting better. I've no, made strides. No, Not like minute. the last few years, they've been wait, pretty great. Wait a minute. No, but you, once you're asked, once the question is, are you a starter in the NFL? What's he supposed to say? No? No, he's supposed to say, yes, absolutely. I'm working hard. I'm making strides. Not like, you see those last two years? 
killed that, it. That's the point, because we saw the last two years, and the last two years would suggest that he's not. Plus, when you get traded to Cleveland, that probably means you're not a good quarterback. Well, certainly when you get traded to Cleveland as just a new math, salary cap move like baseball of trying to just erase your salary where Houston is just trying to get rid of your salary and Cleveland is taking it on without really much belief in you. Let's hear that sound again. I I love the last. uh, That's okay. That's my favorite part of that sound. Are you good enough to be a starting quarterback in this league? I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. Why? (laughs) I I think the proof is in the film for the past two years. But, I, but some people would say the proof's not in the film from last year. It's okay. Great follow-up. That I mean, interviewer it, is great. Well, it, wow. He's a great interviewer, but also the why makes Brock Osweiler laugh, and at that point he's just scrambling. And you've seen Brock Osweiler scramble. <laughs> he, he wears the, those Nike Air Cement. So, like, he laughs uncomfortably. That laugh is not, I found that funny. Right. That laugh is like, ooh, you've cornered me. Checkmated. it. But Mike is right. You just have to say, yeah, I believe in myself. I still think I could do this. You would have precious little proof from watching the film the last two years. But clearly he's disoriented. <laughs> it's like he's concussed. That why hit him in the head, and now he the, the why, listen to how he reacts to the why, because he was not expecting the why. The why is a blindside hit. Wait a minute. I've been saying for a long time that I'm absolutely a starter in this league. I was not prepared for you to ask a follow-up that made me expound. <laughs> Are you good enough to be a starting quarterback in this league? I mean, absolutely, the system. absolutely. Why? <laughs> I, I think the proof is in the film for the past two years. But I, but some people would say the proof's not in the film from last year. It's okay. Brock, I'd go the other way on this. The film from the last two years, if we check it, it would disprove that you're an NFL starter. Actually, no. There were plenty of those games that I started. Check the tape. <laughs> that's, that's actually the way to answer that. Yes. Am I an NFL starter? Look at my stat line on footballreference.com. Game started. Yeah, check under GS. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, look at my GS numbers. 14 of them last yes. year. Yes. Yeah. Except the ones that mattered. Right. And except when Tom Savage replaced me. And the Texans decided to just staple my contract and send it away because <laughs> it's horrific. Because the they look at it every day in the Texans' offices and they run away into another room to hide from it. The first ever NBA trade in the NFL right. just to take a bad contract. <laughs> Tom O'Brien, we've talked about him before. The guy with the chin that looks like it's trying to swallow his face. That's Bill O'Brien. Tom O'Brien's a oh, former Indiana Pacers head coach, I believe, in Boston College, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, you got it right, Show off, showing off your O'Brien muscles. Flexing your O'Brien muscles. I believe uh, Frank Vogel replaced him, didn't he? Right? Guys, am I right? Wait a minute. Who are you making? Isn't Tom O'Brien a, a, he's a football coach? Tom O'Brien's a Boston College uh, basketball coach. No, I think he's the Boston College football coach. Mm-hmm. Is he? Uh-oh. I think, isn't he the one? I think, isn't Tom O'Brien the one that originally at some point, didn't he have Russell Wilson at one point? Wait a minute. You guys made him Boston College? Isn't that. North Carolina? He was at North Carolina State from 2007 to 2010. What the hell's going on around here? We've fallen into an O'Brien hole. Oh, no. Yeah. Not Jim O'Brien. Damn it. Tony Dungy next. (laughs) Hey, buddy. The wait is over. We've got Joe Harper in here. He's a polygraph specialist. He's very intimidating. He's a nice man, but physically, he's very intimidating, and he has a bullet in his neck. The man... The myth, the legend, Joe Harper makes his return June 21st for the second installment of Stool Eyes. Are your apologies to Dan sincere after you make fun of his fat face? Yes. That'd be a no. Oh, <laughs> man. He said Stugatz is the worst liar since O.J. Simpson. If the Heat and the Knicks played in the Eastern Conference Finals, would you root for the Heat? Poor nerd. Yes. Liar. Let's go, Knicks. Ah! Stugatz, Joe Harper, collision course. Were you really the big man on campus in college, as you have claimed? Yes. Oh, he, I think that's the truth. No, it's not. Ah! <laughs> June 21st. You won't want to miss this, buddy. 
Uncle Freddy. Marriage at some point, I think for a lot of people, they get down to, and this is really a sad part about marriage, where you're just having sex one day a week. And that one day a week is Sunday. And so I love Sundays, but I hate everything I have to do leading up till Sunday, which is essentially agree with everything my wife says and does everything she asked me to do. And I'm only doing that for the Sundays. Because if I don't do it, there ain't no Sundays. And I can't live without my Sundays. Stugats. I wonder if Abby hates Sundays. Oh, she despises them. This is the Uncle Fatty Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Tony Dungy with us on behalf of All Pro Dad. You submit your photos of your dad grilling for a chance to win a barbecue prize package that includes a char griller for Father's Day. Facebook.com slash char griller. That's what he's doing here. Tony Dungy with us on ESPN Radio. He's had a lot of success with his book, Quiet Strength. So thank you, Tony, as always, for making time for us. I give you your choice. You can only pick one. You can write Quiet Strength and have it be the success that it is, or you can win a Super Bowl championship. Which one do you choose? Wow, that, that's a tough choice. Um, the the book was really gratifying, especially um, to talk to teachers as I go around the country and say, you know, I, I try to get my students to read, especially young boys, and they don't want to read necessarily, but they'll read your book uh, and, you know, get some information from that. that that's that been great, but uh, winning a Super Bowl, that was a, a special moment for, for us, our family, uh, Indianapolis, the city. Uh, that that one would be a tough one to turn down. It'd be close, but I'd have to say winning the Super Bowl. Tony, what's the closest you've been to coming back to coaching? You know, I don't think I was ever really close. I, I got um, a chance to talk to the Detroit Lions a couple of years ago, and, you know, that being my home state and my dad being such a big Lions fan, if my dad was still alive, I might have thought about it a, a little bit harder uh, but that's probably the, the closest I was, and it, it wasn't really that close. I've got a theory, Tony, I want to run past you, that the guys, that coaching can be like heroin addiction, and the guys who stay away, Jimmy Johnson, John Gruden, Bill Cower, you, the guys who stay away are the guys who have won. That if you don't win, there is something that keeps calling you back to that. Win at the highest level. Are you buying on my theory or you reject it? And your reasons for leaving are different than most. But do you buy that or do you reject it? No, I think there is something to that. Um, you want to, to achieve. You want to succeed. You're, you're driven to, to win. And uh, it is easier to step away after you've won. I, I thought about it probably the last four or five years I was coaching. Is this the year? Is this the right time? And, um, you know, I almost – stepped away right after we won the Super Bowl in 06 uh, because you do get that feeling, hey, we've won it, but um, th it, it wasn't quite the time. I knew in 08 it was time for me, family-wise, other things I wanted to do in life, but, uh, but I think you're definitely right. It's much easier to step away and it's much easier to stay away uh, if you've won. Again, he's with us on behalf of All Pro Dad as part of Father's Day, which is coming up. Submit photos of your dad grilling for a chance to win a Char Griller barbecue prize package for Father's Day at Facebook.com slash Char Griller. Who is the biggest headache that Tony Dungy had as a player in his entire career? Oh, for me, I'd have to say Barry Sanders. No, no doubt about it. Um, we prepared for him, and it seems like we played him twice a year forever. Uh, on, as a defensive coach, you could do everything right, have the perfect defense design, have three people in the hole ready to make the tackle, and he would squirt out and make a 50-yard run. So I was always nervous every time we played against Barry and uh, never never felt secure uh, when we were playing him. He was the biggest headache I had to go against by far. Great answer, not what I was asking you. I was asking you a guy you had to coach, not a guy you had to coach against. Oh, a headache yeah, on my no, team. No, yeah, right, you right, did. Right, you did. Right. That was great answer. Oh, I understand why he yes, answered yes, that Yes, it's way, a great though, yeah. way to avoid yeah. the particular question I was no, asking. No, no. You know what? I, I, seriously, I didn't have many headaches. Um, one of the things, one of the first uh, – situation I had where I was the head coach uh, in Tampa. I, I, we had a team meeting. And I said, hey, I'm going to make this an enjoyable place to play. We're going to win. I need you to be on board with me. Now, if you don't want to be on board, 
you know, we'll try to get you someplace where, where you don't have to, to follow the rules and you, you don't have to be part of something special. And that was it. And, and we didn't have many people that didn't toe the line uh, because we, we tried to make it a place where it was fun to, to be part of it. So uh, I really honestly didn't have many headaches. True or false, Tony Dungy once knew the play another team was going to run, knew the play, got secret information, and felt it was morally bankrupt to tell his defensive players that he knew the play. It was then a halfback pass that went for a touchdown, and Tony Dungy felt enormous remorse because he made the moral choice that ended up in abject failure. True story. Uh, I got a, a tip from a uh, somebody who was in the stadium watching uh, – the Denver Broncos practice, and I just didn't feel like it was the right way to do it. Uh, I didn't tell our team about it, and um, when the play unfolded, uh, I felt terrible. The, I think the Lord bailed me out, though, because there, there was a penalty, and the play got called back, but I, I still think it was the right thing to do. Um, and uh, Had we lost the game because of that play, I might feel a little different, but uh, I, I still think it was the right thing to do. Tony, not a lot of people are doing that. Like, in the history of coaching, in the, in, in the, in the history of coaching, you might be the only coach in the world who would do that. Like, that is really unusual. Well, I just think there are some things more important than winning, and I think your integrity is one of those. So uh, to me, uh, it, it wasn't a tough choice, but uh, as I say, I'm glad it didn't, that play didn't cost us the game. Tony, what's the habit you have that annoys your wife the most? Uh, chewing ice. <laughs> I don't know why it does, but when I chew ice, it drives her crazy, and I, I can't. I can't stop doing it. I've, I've chewed ice my whole life, and um, it, it's just one of those things I guess we'll, we'll always disagree on. Tony, you seem like a real nightmare as a husband. Unreasonable, angry, brooding, right. brooding, <laughs> bitter. I mean, if that's the worst it, thing. Yes, I mean. what, is the secret, what is the secret to a successful marriage, according to Tony Dungy? I think it's really understanding that you have to work together, just like uh, a head coach and a general manager. You know, when, when people would ask me, well, who had the final say? Who had the final say on the 53-man roster? Who had the final say on the draft? Uh, I would honestly say, you know, I, I really don't remember. I'm, I'm sure the GMs did, but it wasn't an issue because we always felt like we were working together. And I think it's the same thing in a marriage. Uh, it can't be I'm the boss or, or I run this part of it and you run that part of it. Uh, you have to work together on everything. Marriage is, is hard enough uh, without separating it down, and I, I think that's something my wife and I try, try to do. Tony, I'm a nervous wreck. All right, hold on a second. I'll ask it. I'll handle it. He's right. with us on behalf of All Pro Dad. Submit photos of your dad grilling for a chance to win a Char Griller barbecue prize package for Father's Day at Facebook.com slash Char Griller. It doesn't matter who asked the question. I'm still a nervous wreck. No, that's wreck. fine. I'm going to okay. ask it. And Tony has been playful on the show before. And just so you understand where this question is coming from, Tony, we've asked it to everybody this week. David Hasselhoff. Uh, we're going to ask it to Wayne Newton in a little bit. Brian Cranston of okay. Breaking Bad. I feel like I'm in good company. Yeah, well, well, yes, we'll, well, find, we'll out find out. Second, yeah. I mean, I, well, first question is, do you know what the Mile High Club is? Does Tony Dungy know what the Mile High Club is? I've never heard of it. Okay. Right. Uh, this is now going to be problematic and awkward, but okay. Well, how are you so, going to ask this one? No, this well, hold on a second. Now, now, like now I need answer. to explain it. No, uh, the Mile High Club is... Uh, making love to a significant other in an airplane a mile above the earth. Stugatz is hiding under the desk. Thank okay. you. You're okay. no help. And so, uh, so David Hasselhoff told us he's in the club. What, uh, you know, I, you know, we assume Wayne Newton's in the club. Brian Cranston's in the club. We, uh, there were a lot of people assuming that you're not in this club. And I think that they're, you know, unfairly smearing repressions upon the religious. I think that you might be. So. In, in an airplane, no, I'd have to say I'm not in that club. All right, well, there we go. All right, that's okay. But see, yes, it, 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 all aboard. right, no, it's too late. Come on. All right, Tony, we appreciate your time, and we appreciate you tolerating our nonsense. Again, he's with us on behalf of All Pro Dad. Submit photos of your dad grilling for a chance to win a Char Griller barbecue prize package for Father's Day at Facebook.com slash Char Griller. Tony, thank you. We All always right, now, appreciate I just have one, one question for you two guys. Now, the, the contest opens up this coming Tuesday. Are we going to see a video or a photo of you guys grilling and 
trying to be the world's greatest barbecue dad. Well, let's see here. I'm not a dad. Uh, my father, I don't think my father's ever grilled before. I don't think I've ever seen my father. I really <laughs> don't think I, I don't think Dan, I've, Dan's okay, not a dad, so. and, and I'm the type of guy who I am a dad, and I'll tell you that I'm going to do it, and I'll never do it. Right. Okay. So there you go. But I'll do it for All you, right. Tony. I'll do it for no, you. He's lying to you. It. He's All lying right. to you, right. Tony. Facebook.com <laughs> slash chargriller. I would never do anything to disrespect Tony Dungeon. Uh, Tony, thank you for being on with us. We appreciate it, sir. Hey, thanks, guys. All righty. Thank you, Tony. Uncle Fatty! I feel like everything we just did was racially insensitive, and I'm good with it. Stugats. It is deadline day. This is the Uncle Fatty Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. So Seth Wickersham is an excellent writer for ESPN the magazine, and he has done a deep dive on the Seahawks and Richard Sherman and what's on the television right now. The quote is, quote, Richard Sherman won't let it go, and it's a problem, end quote. Uh, I think we now know, or Seth Wickersham is now revealing to all, why it is the curious case of Richard Sherman, where the Seahawks are publicly saying, yep, we're happy to trade him. I'm guessing that he covered this. Can you guys get me that article so I can inform the audience on what it is that Seth Wickersham has done for ESPN the magazine? Because when he dives deep into a subject... It's usually pretty good. On a more superficial note, the opposite of a deep dive, the New York Post is reporting that Giants receiver Odell Beckham skipped another practice session with his teammates to party with new girlfriend Iggy Azalea in Los Angeles. They went bowling. They were seen giggling, cozying, canoodling. Put that on the poll, Guillermo. Have you ever use the word canoodling. He uh, was wearing black camo shorts with a black hoodie. He stuck to iced water, but he ate chicken skewers, chicken tenders, pigs in a blanket, and assorted desserts. Nice. These are uh, voluntary practices. He was also uh, seen with Johnny Manziel in Los Angeles. Are you actively trying to bother the Giants? Yes, that's what he's doing, yes. And the fan base and everyone, yes. These are voluntary workouts, but they're not really voluntary. There's pressure to be at the, at them. And uh, Odell Beckham's people are denying that he is dating Iggy Azalea. How do you feel about, if you still have feelings for Iggy Azalea and your swaggy P, do we have a Matt Harvey, Julian Edelman situation where? No, oh, no, 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 no. You're Swaggy P, and you're threatened by, because uh, Iggy Azalea has upgraded. If she is indeed dating Odell Beckham, she has upgraded. Oh, no question about it. But if you're Swaggy P, I mean, he's he's moved on already. He was moving on while he was with Iggy Azalea. So Well, he was cheating on her. That's right. not the same as moving on. He's fine, man. Yeah, Swaggy P said when there were rumors of uh, Iggy Azalea and French Montana dating, he said, I wish they get married. Okay, so he has uh, he has moved on. <laughs> the Matt Harvey story was a deliciously human one, though, right? You see the Met Gala, you're on the road, and you still have feelings for Adriana Lima, and she gets out of – you see pictures of her with Julian Edelman. What's the, what's the matter? I mean, he was dating her for like a month, and she was already with Julian Edelman for like a year. Get over it, Matt Harvey. Okay, there it is. Guillermo, uh, inexplicably turning more and more into Stugatz every day. Well, he's right. I mean, it's certainly no reason. I understand being hurt, but it's no reason to not show up to the park. The okay. Oh, yeah. You guys uh, just get, I mean, you're probably oh, right about this, but give me all the experience you guys have dating Victoria's Secret supermodels and how hurtful that might be. You guys, experts on everything here, how things hurt. Go ahead. Give me all the examples you guys have of seeing uh, the girl that you're falling for out with Julian Edelman. Go ahead. I mean, you just apply the same expertise to this that you do to all of sports, where you know nothing and you give me all of the information inside someone's soul. little clingy, that's all I'm saying. 
Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans proudly supports the Dan Lebitard Show. When it comes to the big decision of choosing a mortgage lender, it's important to work with someone you can trust who has your best interest in mind. With Rocket Mortgage, you'll get a transparent online process that gives you the confidence you need to make an informed decision. Skip the bank, skip the waiting, and go completely online at quickenloans.com slash Dugats. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. And now, insurance-minded speeches from GEICO. Hardship. My grandmother would go through it every month to pay her insurance bill. First, she would handwrite a paper check, in cursive. Then, using her own tongue, she would wet a stamp for an envelope. Today, however, we need not weary our hands and tongues. Today, we can pay our GEICO bill with the GEICO app. Away with hardship, in with bill pay on the GEICO app. Thank you.